months ago, I had a young lady reach out to me and wanted to come on the podcast to talk about a book she had written. So she sent me the book, and as usual, I didn't I didn't want to read it. I like to talk to the authors without reading the book. I want them to uh, basically sell me on it. I guess that's the way Larry King, Larry King did the same thing. And my understanding is he never read a book before he interviewed an author. Anyways, so I read the book afterwards, and I'll be honest with you, it's probably one of the best books I've ever read. But this young lady's from Texas. Her name is Megan Hardgrave, and she wrote a book called Ride with the Assassin. It's about this young boy who was riding with John Wilkes Booth after John Wilkes Booth had assassinated President Lincoln. Now, this young boy didn't know that. And it's talking about the, I guess the, I don't want to say the adventure, but the the whole thing. And it's actually a true story. It's, it's a historical fiction, so she had to change the names a little bit, but it is definitely a book worth getting, especially for people around here with everything with John Wilkes Booth and Tudor Hall and so forth. Uh, but I'll have a link for it in the uh, show notes, and you can also find it on Amazon. It's called Ride with the Assassin by Megan L. Hardgrave. Stay tuned. Welcome to the award-winning podcast, Harford County Living with Rich Bennett, coming to you from the Freedom Federal Credit Union Studios. Each week, you'll hear interesting interviews, commentary, discussions, storytelling, and more. Here's your host, Marine Corps veteran, professional DJ, entrepreneur, podcaster, and my father, Rich Bennett. All right, so today we're sitting here with an author, uh, Megan L. Hardgrave. She has written a book uh, that has to deal with uh, a young man, but also a historical, two historical figures, really. One who was uh, very well known here in Harford County, Maryland, and the other one who very well known throughout the country. And the book is titled Ride with the Assassin. Uh, it's a book about John Wilkes Booth and this little um, boy, and correct me if I'm wrong, Megan, but a little boy that helped him escape after he shot Abraham Lincoln, correct? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so um, go ahead and, and, first of all, welcome and hopefully, you know, knock on wood, everything works well. Megan and I tried to record this a while ago. We kept having technical difficulties. I'm here in Maryland. She's in Texas. And just things didn't want to cooperate that day. And thank God the weather here is nice. Please tell me you don't have any thunderstorms or anything going on out there. Oh, uh, it's kind of cold. They said tonight's going to get down to 25. Oh, okay. That ain't nothing. So nothing that's going <laughs> to knock out. The, it's Texas. <laughs> well, I don't want to say nothing that's going to knock out power because what was it last year? You got last, that. Oh, it was nasty awful. Nasty freeze. Yeah. Yeah. So keep your fingers. We'll, we'll all keep our fingers crossed that nothing like that happens again. So, Megan, first of all, tell everybody about yourself, um, you know, how long you've been writing and then why you decided to write this book. Okay. Um, well, I started doing research for Ride the Assassin or what became Ride when I was in junior high, high school. And that was just my passion was always Abraham Lincoln and mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I learned anything I could about him and I've been to all of the, the historical sites, save his birthplace and the one in Spencer County, Indiana. And, oh. uh, yeah, <laughs> so I've been kind of a Lincoln buff probably for 30 plus years. And once you get bitten by the bug, it, it never leaves you. Right. So, um, you know, as far as why I wanted to tell this story is it's a, it's a smaller story within the bigger story. Right. And um, at the time, I didn't know anything about this teenager. He was 15 and that he was even around the area, much less involved in the assassination 
area you know he didn't go in the theater himself but he was to borrow a phrase at the right place at the wrong time and um what got my interest was i was on a bus ride home and those things can get kind of rambunctious with all the kids (laughs) yeah and so i had the time life book uh, called the assassination on my lap and I was just flipping through the pages and the kids were like hey Megan who's this kid they saw this woodcut picture of Booth coming out the back door and then you see somebody chasing him that right. was you know that was somebody from the audience and then over in the corner you see this little short kid and he's kind of he's not really well in the picture it's kind of uh, garbled but anyway they're like megan who's the kid and so that's what started the story and i had no help on you know that what he his name or that he was even a known to booth or any of that in the beginning so we're talking 1993 to 1995 and that was the beginnings of the research and the writing and the everything so how much research did you put into this? Because, I mean, you found it out his name and everything? Yeah, you found out his name first, and then you found out that he lived around the general area of D.C. He lived in Baltimore oh, with wow. his with his dad. He, his dad was a doctor. Uh, he had brothers and sisters older than him. So this was his first adventure away from his folks. Right kind of a coming of age story. And I found out the last name was um, in the story. I changed it to Harris, but the real name is Joseph Burroughs. And huh. there's, there's two different spellings of Burroughs, but right. the one I, yeah, the one I go with is B U R R O U G H S. And uh, so that's where I started. And so when all the other kids were talking about blood and guts and gore, <laughs> you know, I was uh-huh. like, no. <laughs> so we're talking, this thing probably went on for three and a half years or more just for the research. Wow. And there's all kinds of little pieces that I put together. Um, you know, I would go to a Lincoln site and I'd, I'd find a, another little piece of the puzzle and go, oh, Maybe I need to include that, or this is where this fits, or, you know, if you're looking at Lincoln's top hat, you're like, wow, he actually wore it the night of the assassination, you know, so it just, it kept evolving, and so this thing started in junior high, high school, and it's followed me all the way through college, and now into my adult life, and my personal library is over a hundred and 20 books what and 120 books yeah it's on so abraham f- lincoln or just on link on lincoln and in booth and you know 120 i didn't realize yeah. there was that many written about it well there's well yeah last, i guess last yeah, time i counted you know that's just my personal library but right i can't <laughs> have any more room i have to clear out another bookshelf <laughs> <laughs> but um you know, I found out that from the context that I made through the years that we're looking at 15 million just on Lincoln alone. F- 15 million what? Books about no. his lot, his life and times and associates. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. Okay. So, you, but, so you, but what you have is 120 books about the assassination. Well, combined, yeah. Uh, okay. Wow, Different. Still a lot. Yeah. So like I said, it goes back to this is the smaller story within the bigger story. Right. And so, you know, I've started, I started looking at, okay, how would I even tackle this thing? Yeah. Um, you know, so I just started looking at, first of all, okay, here's Lincoln's life. This is the last half of his life and then you backtrack you know what you you kind of zero in on what you need 
Yeah. So, with all this research and everything, mm. and, and correct me if I'm wrong, this is actually labeled as a historical fiction, though, right? Yeah. Yes. So, explain to everybody why it's, why it's historical fi- fiction and not actually a historical textbook or whatever. Well, the difference between fiction and nonfiction is nonfiction is completely true. And historical fiction mixes what could be true or plausibly true into historical uh, dates, times, right. timelines, you know. And some of the most popular books out there mix the two. And if you're good at what you do, you the reader cannot tell where the lines blur. Right. So, like, mine has a, t- a timeline in the beginning, and it, it shows this is what Lincoln did throughout the day. This shows the top half shows what Lincoln did. Bottom half shows what Booth did on the day of the assassination starting at 7 a.m. And it, oh. run- and it runs until the 26th, I believe. And then it goes into the aftermath, which is the trial, May the whatever, through July. And so... You know, so explain. All right, the so the boy's name in this is, is Mark. Is Mark? Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> excuse me. Explain to everybody what, uh, w- without of course telling the whole story. Um, yeah. Basically, how Mark came to meeting John Wilkes Booth, and he went on this journey with him, right? Yes. I don't want to say journey. He was. He yeah. was running for the law. Yeah, for twelve days. Yeah. So, so, I mean, tell it. Let's hear the story about that because this, I think this may amaze a lot of people. Okay, uh, the story begins with teenager Mark Harris attending outside Ford's Theater the historical night of April fourteenth, eighteen sixty-five. He is ordered by an actor he's met earlier to hold the reins of his horse while he is inside. The actor, John, is inside the theater. Mark has an ESP vision, which is extrasensory perception, right? which is like an addition to your five senses. And he sees the man moving throughout Ford's theater and killing President Lincoln, but he is not inside. And he never sees the man's face. But Mark does not realize that his vision is real. Lincoln right. has been killed by John. And John comes out, and he involves Mark in his escape. He says, you know, give me my horse. And someone comes out the door and starts shooting at both of them. And Mark's like, I got to get out of here. Uh, yeah, I would too if somebody was shooting yeah, me. <laughs> Right. And so they cross the Navy Yard Bridge into Maryland. As they ride, Mark recalls that he came to Washington to see his hero, Lincoln, and the events of the preceding three days. So that's where you start. Wow. So why did, okay. Why didn't he just leave? Why did Mark just not leave? Yeah. Instead of, yeah. Why, and why did he stay with Booth all this time and not just leave? He couldn't. Booth so, said, Booth said, I will kill you if you don't come with me. Oh. So instead of shooting him in the leg or hitting him on the head with his pistol, you know, he said, I need to get out of here. So he hops on the other horse. There's two horses, one right. being Boos and the other being the, you know, the other one. And so he goes down that Baptist alley, turns left on F Street, goes the opposite way of the theater, goes across. Uh, Pennsylvania Avenue, then he goes diagonal from Pennsylvania Avenue straight out to the Navy Yard Bridge, and uh, we're talking about maybe three blocks uh, right. from, from, from if you're familiar with D.C., it's like three blocks from Ford's out of the city. Yeah. So he goes past the Capitol, goes past the Navy Yard Bridge, and when they get to the Navy Yard Bridge... Silas T. Cobb, the the guard, stops him and says, where do you think you're going? And Booth says, I'm going home to Charles County, Maryland. And 
And he's like, well, I'm not really supposed to let anybody pass after nine o'clock. And he said, who are you? And Booth just is real bold. And he says, John Wilkes Booth. And he says, well, I shouldn't really do this, but okay, I'm going to let you pass. So he lets Mark and Booth pass this wooden bridge. Mm -hmm. Now, this is before everybody knows that Booth is the killer and the whole city just shuts down. Well, and Booth already had a name for himself anyway. He's because he's an actor, right? True. He was 26 and a half years old from a famous theatrical family. Right. You know, so everybody in the country knew the name of Booth. They knew his father. They knew his brother, Edwin. You know. Yeah. uh, He was the oldest of the ten children. Um, And I guess in a way, Mark was probably starstruck, I would think, in a way. Yeah, he's like, yeah, he's like, you know. But his hero has been killed and... But so, he still doesn't realize that Booth killed no, him. No, 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 no. Okay. That comes later. Okay. <laughs> so well, the first... I should understand why he would be with him. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so then you the next thing you find out is they stop at Surratt's Tavern. And Mary mm-hmm. Surratt is, of course, the owner. And you will witness John getting medical help from his friend, uh, Dr. Mudd, later. Right. And you will want to alert Mark as he's innocently drawn into deeper into the conspiracy. You will feel Mark's shock as he finds out that Lincoln was murdered at the same time he had his first vision. Wow. He comes to the repulsive conclusion that he has been aiding John Wilkes Booth, the assassin of his beloved president. So then here's this 15-year-old kid and he's having to deal with all this feelings of, okay, I'm with this guy, but... I, what am I going to do? I mean, he, you know, so that's where you begin and that's kind of the first steps. Um, And as the story goes on, he gets deeper and deeper into this until he realizes that he has to escape and he decides to take a course in action and exposing Booth's deed in such a way to minimize his personal risk. Risking being caught, he courageously obtains evidence, Booth's diary. Oh. And then then the Calvary, you know, you've got the 13th and the 16th Calvary converging. Right. And they close in. And the climax is they row, they, they row across the Potomac. And then after they come out the other side... You know, um, other people help them. Confederate sympathizers offer them food and and water and newspapers. And then uh, they meet up with the Calvary on the 26th of April in the tobacco barn at Garrett's Farm. And so that's when he makes his escape. So they light up the barn he hears the shot that kills Booth, and he rolls out away from the um, the chaos. So that kind of gives him a cover yeah. to escape and go home. And yeah, then, they're still looking for him, but they think yeah, he's somebody else. Well, right? they think he is David Harold. He looks like Harold. Right. You know, he he's dressed like Harold. So... You know, at some point in the story, he meets Harold and he's like, hey, I look like you. Wow. You know, so why don't we change places? And then uh, later, when he does finally go home, he takes the diary to his brother, Jonas, who has connections with um, the government to get the diary to Secretary of War Stanton anonymously. Mm -hmm. And then... The diary is introduced at the trial as evidence, and Mark goes to the trial, and he's sitting in the courtroom, and he's like, I hope nobody recognizes me, because this could be really bad. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, no. Uh, (laughs) So, and then to finish up the whole entire story and bring it full circle, Mark uh, gets married, has a family, lives until the 
30s, uh, and he's an aged old senator, and he goes to the dedication of the Link Memorial, May 30th, 1922. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Wow. So there's a there's a lot in there. So with with Mark, are you actually going to do a follow up book about him? Not with Mark, but I'm doing one with the family, the Harris family. But it's based on Crown Prince Rudolf of Austria Hungary, oh. and it's a it's a it's another time period. So we jump different country, different historical figure. Okay. But uh, but I know you got to be right. I know you got to write another book about Lincoln. I will at some point. But okay, I was going <laughs> to say the love you. I mean, one hundred and twenty <laughs> books that you have in your own personal library, and yeah, all these years doing the research. I, you, can you do one on him being the vampire killer? <laughs> I think that's already been done. <laughs> Has anybody not seen the movie? That was awful. I, I well, first when I saw the title, I'm like. First, first of all, who in the world came up with this idea? <laughs> and it's like, well, uh, you have to it, watch it just because of the name. Yeah, I know, and you have to be careful of of uh, all the political undertones now. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> but okay, um, so, so like yeah, vampire killer. <laughs> well, <laughs> interesting. Yeah. yeah, that was not my favorite Lincoln movie. No. Now, I mean, actually, actually, let me ask you this. So, because there's been a ton of Lincoln movies. Yeah. Who was your favorite actor that portrayed Lincoln? My favorite growing up was Hal Holbrook mm. and Sandberg's Lincoln. He nailed it. The voice, right. the voice, the look, the mannerisms. I mean, I watched that. I taped it off of TV and I would just watch it, you know, almost until I made my parents sick, I guess. <laughs> But anyway, you know, as far as current ones, I would say Daniel Day Lewis. Yeah, I heard Daniel Day Lewis did a good job. I haven't he seen did. that one yet. He he looks like him, but he's got the mannerisms and the compassion that you know. And the cool thing about that one is the sound effects. They actually recorded like the carriage wheels squeaking and the the ticking of the clock and Oh wow. Yeah. The actual, I'll have to, I'll have the actual stuff, one. yeah. Yeah, because Holberg was definitely mine. So out uh, of those two, I guess Hal Holbrook's probably still your favorite. Well, Uh-oh. Now, now that I've actually gotten to watch uh, Young Mr. Lincoln, the 1939 one, you know, that one, I was like, how many times did I watch that one? <laughs> so, yeah. Huh. So that was that was Henry Fonda, but there was a cool story about what they let him do. Yeah. Um, he didn't want to do the part. He was like, the great emancipator, I can't do that. And so his boss at Warner Brothers sent him, you know, sent him the script and sat him down and said, look, you're not playing the great emancipator yet. This is a Jack Legg lawyer from Springfield, Illinois. Right. You know, he's lanky. He's... He's got rough edges. He's not really, you know, he's not women's pick of the year. <laughs> so, you know, but I I love that one because it's so real. Right. The only the only thing that surprised me when I actually saw um New Salem was the river this this the river uh, was not the the same one in the movie, so it it ran the wrong direction. So they the they world? dubbed the, I think they dubbed the Ohio River for the Sangamon River, and so there's a you know, and I was like, uh, <laughs> but everything. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of funny because you look at some of these movies, especially the old you know the history movies, yeah. And it's the little things that people catch. Yeah, like I forget what movie it was, with, but uh, I think it took back during the medieval times, and there was an airplane in the sky. Yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, somebody didn't do their research too well there. <laughs> but oh well, so you know, so it goes. So in all the movies you've seen about Abe Lincoln, mm-hmm. was 
Burroughs ever his character in any of those movies? There's one okay. that actually has him on screen for like three or four minutes, and it's the old Prince of Players with Raymond Massey and wow. um, uh, Richard Burton, I think. Yeah. So that was 1955 or 56. And so... Um, wow. So, but in that movie, they have him standing. Booth comes out and goes around the building. And before he, t- he does that, you see the kid just quick, you know. He doesn't yeah. have any, he doesn't have any lines or anything, but you see him have the horse and Booth gets on the horse and So, have you decided whether or not you're going to approach some screenwriters about possibly turning <laughs> your book into a sh- I mean, it could be a short film, it could I mean, it could actually be a a full motion picture. Well, I've actually had a uh, Hollywood director friend uh, do quotes for me on the back of the book. Oh. Uh, Jim Abrams, he was a personal friend. And uh, so he read it early, early on. And, right. you know, but now he's retired and a co-founder of uh, his son's foundation called the Charlie Foundation for ketogenic diet therapies and uh so and there's been other people in the industry that have looked at it through the years um you know but through the years wait a minute yeah wait when did the book come out the book came out um in 2010 as far as the soft cover Really, but, but the ebook has not come out until 2017, oh, and it, wow. it's currently at uh, Amazon right now, and other places. Um, I can give you the link. So Barnes and Noble, and so if right. you go on Amazon and just search for "Ride yeah. with the Assassin." Well, they can do it that way, or they can go directly to the link. Uh, it's https colon backslash books to read dot com slash u slash thirty eight G V capital V six and that will take them directly to I believe Amazon. Right. And and they can choose between the ebook which is nine ninety nine or the soft cover which is twelve ninety nine. And the reason we kept it so low was because I really wanted the kids to pick it up and right. for this to be their introduction to Lincoln and the conspiracy and the assassination and the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And so that was my first target audience was the kids. I wanted to reach the kids because right. I was, I was their age, but there was nothing being done for them. And they were like, they had all these questions and then the adults, that was the surprise. All the adults were like, Megan, this is really good. You yeah. know, I had a, a family member, you know, and he didn't know very much about it. And so he he got a copy when he was visiting us and he read it in one afternoon and he called me and he said, Megan, this is wonderful. I I read it and, and now, <laughs> you know, he's passed it around to his friends and they've read it and now he's out of copies. <laughs> what well, it means he's got to buy more. Yeah. So hey, hey, you actually got photos in this book and everything too, right? I do. I have my okay. own my own photos from when I went on the escape route. Um I went on the escape route in 1995 to 96. It is a 60 mile bus tour. Mm-hmm. Done by uh, Surratt House. There's other people, I guess, that do it. Um, the Smithsonian does it in the in the spring and in the fall, I guess. Right. And um, so I started getting familiar with the contacts of the names up there and different people. And the Surratt House was the very first uh, museum that bought several copies, and now. You know, other other authors and other 
people have come through and so they sell those but uh, currently I have 27 retail places that sell it including the National Park Service the Lincoln Boyhood Home the Birthplace Appomattox Courthouse um, I'm trying to get a couple of other ones <laughs> Um, you know, I was going to say, for, so here in Harford County of Maryland, is it at Tudor Hall? I don't think so. Okay. I've tried to reach them, and I don't know what happened. Uh, <laughs> I think they may be affiliated with the Historical so- Society of Harford okay. County. Okay. So that's probably who you're going to have to contact. It would make sense for it to be in there. Yeah, it would. Now, I've never, yeah. I've never been inside the home or anything right. but i've i've heard you know they have oh they tour- do all they have tours and there. stuff yeah unfortunately i haven't been there yet either and i live here <laughs> well, well you're it's, you're it's close to the sam <laughs> well that's that is true that is true so well megan thank you so much and tell everybody again how they can get your book okay um you can go directly to the website uh, books to read dot com slash u slash thirty eight g v four uh, v six or um you know you can go to uh, if you're a museum you can contact me directly by email megan hardgrave fifteen fifteen at gmail dot com and just put in the subject line Lincoln so I'll know that you know, that's related to the book. Um, the cool thing about the uh, distributor, they said that any museum that wants wholesale copies of any quantity, we can get a special price for them. And, oh. and um, you know, they can get it directly from me instead of going through Amazon, which charges the full price. Yeah, so, I was going to say because... So, the full price for the soft cover is like twelve ninety nine. So if you did the math on how many copies that would be, yeah, and that <laughs> would make sense for because all these museums, or at least from what I know, they're nonprofits. And yeah, if they, they get it wholesale, and then they can make a profit from it. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. I, I, huh. I'm going to get a hold of somebody from the historical society and let them know about okay. this. Okay. Uh, because they should definitely have it there. And who knows? They may. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but I'll, I'll find out. Okay. I will definitely find out. So, And I'll have the links in the show notes, too, for anybody that wants to purchase the book so they can just click on it and go right there. So, Megan, when the next book's done, you got to let me know. I will. <laughs> Thanks so much. Okay. So if you have an idea or someone you would like to hear on the podcast or if you would like to come on, let me know. Send an email to podcast at harfordcountyliving.com and I will do my best to either get that person on, get you on, or talk about the idea that you wanted me to talk about. And also, if you can, please, please, please leave a full review at lovethepodcast.com forward slash harco living. Again, that's lovethepodcast.com forward slash harco living. And also, please follow the Facebook page, Harford County Living with Rich Bennett. Again, it's facebook.com forward slash HCL show. What I tend to do is when you leave a full review and you follow the Facebook page, either or, or both, hopefully both because it's a better chance for you, I do contests. or not contests. I give away things every once in a while, whether it be gift cards or something else. This is your chance to win. And you can enter, well, of course, you can only like the page once, but they're full reviews as many times as you want because you can leave a full review for certain episodes or for the podcast as a whole. And even if you liked it five years ago or left a review five years ago, you're in the drawing each time I do it. So again, you know, for the reviews, go to lovethepodcast.com forward slash harco living and please follow and like our page at facebook.com forward slash h c l show and i want to leave you with these words that a very wise man taught me at broadcasting school if it is to be 
it is up to me. I want to share an amazing experience I had with Tar Hill Construction Group when I needed to install a new roof on my home. Let me tell you, they are truly a cut above the rest. Tar Hill Construction Group is an award-winning residential and commercial roofing and exteriors contractor focusing on roofing, siding, gutters, and solar solutions. Proudly serving Baltimore, Hartford, and Cecil counties, they make it their priority to make a positive impact in the communities they serve first while providing exceptional services in roofing and exteriors. From start to finish, Tar Heel Construction Group proved to be a reputable and dependable contracted solution. Their quality installations and good communication kept me informed and reassured throughout the entire process. It's no wonder they have been voted Harford's Best Roofing Contractor and Best Home Improvement Contractor for three years running. But here's what really impressed me. Tar Heel Construction Group's commitment to continued service and registered warranties. They stand behind their work, ensuring that I have peace of mind for years to come. What's even more remarkable is their dedication to giving back to the community. They aggressively support and uplift the neighborhoods they serve, making a positive difference in people's lives. I feel incredibly grateful and humbled to have chosen Tar Hill Construction Group for my roof. They have earned my trust and respect for being the only contractor to be voted Harford's best roofing contractor and Baltimore's best roofing contractor in the same year. So if you're looking for top-notch roofing and exterior solutions, look no further than Tar Hill Construction Group. Visit their website at tarheelconstructiongroup.com or give them a call at 410-638-7021. Again, that's 410-638-7021. Experience the excellence and community impact for yourself. Tar Hill Construction Group, building excellence one roof at a time.